from the Penn Libraries. Um, start. Uh, thanks, Anu. Thanks for the invitation to be here. Um, I would give a, uh, some remarks, uh, some of which will be in contrast with some of the things uh, that um, Al was talking about, some of which many, most, of, most of which will line up with what Al is talking about. The, the key thing that I think that Al makes, the message Al makes so clear is that pedagogy is the point. It's about learning and how we can make learning work. Um, it, if you talk to folks in Silicon Valley, they have a different idea. Sometimes people who are in charge of keeping the money straight at a university have a different idea. But those of us that are actually doing this, I think, are doing it because it, it's interesting to try to figure out more, uh, uh, just better ways for students to learn. Um, talking in my own experience, I've, I've been trying to teach online uh, for the last decade, um, doing it in varying degrees of, uh, with varying degrees of success. Um, in the early days, there was a distance learning model, which meant that we had the TV cameras and everyone had a TV in their house, so let's just sh you know, spread our message out there and people will just suck it up. Well, that never really worked. Um, the distance learning thing didn't quite go. It was a lot of front end cost to create giant studios. It was a massive delivery mechanism. As the cost of delivery got lower and lower uh, and World Wide Web appeared, uh, and there was uh, tools that were at our disposal that didn't cost tens of thousands of dollars to make this stuff work. Uh, there was a new way of thinking about it. And as I remember, uh, Joe Farrell in my own department came up with a term called distributed learning. Or at least I remember he flagged that in a grant, set of grants that he had over 10 years ago now. Um, I jumped on that and said, why not? Let's use these new tools and see if we can reach uh, a different kind of audience uh, with the kind of materials that I think will uh, uh, be interesting out there. I, I teach great stuff. Greek and Roman mythology, it's, it's, it sells itself, as they say. Um, so I wanted to try to find a way to reach more people than I could otherwise. Uh, and for distributed learning, we were in a little broom closet over in David Rittenhouse Laboratories um, in the basement, and there was a camera, and there was me and the TA, and I would talk, and then the camera would pan over to the TA who was monitoring the chat room, and, and the TA would say, well, be, here's some questions, and we'd go back and forth. Um, and it was, a, 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 it was fun, and it was interesting, and we were learning things. We had an 800 number that kids called in. Um, uh, and it, it was hard not to devolve into a Johnny Carson talk show, um, but it was uh, definitely a platform that had possibilities, and we made those work as best we could. The most interesting thing for me was this online students engaged while they're watching me on their little real video screen at that time, they were also chatting to the chat room. Uh, at the very beginning of the course, the very beginning of trying this experiment, and still today, I, I'm concerned about that division of attention. Um, one of the things that makes me always concerned about entering into this environment is when you go into a, into a medium that is already occupied by lots of different things in which a student is invested, uh, what's happening on the web, what's happening on your chat, what's happening on your email, what's happening on everything else, uh, when you enter into that medium, you're automatically going to compete for attention with all those others. I have heard many bromides with respect to this situation. One of them is, don't worry, as long as you're good enough, you'll crowd out the attention that all those other things are, are, are taking away. I've also heard the bromide that says, you can't do it, because if you get in there, all the other things are going to rob attention from you. Uh, I'm not sure which, I don't endorse either one of these. Uh, I think that it's possible to get there, but I think that we do have to be mindful of what that environment that we're jumping into uh, is like. It's, it's muddy and it's, it's, it's tricky. Uh, one of my friends at uh, Stanford, I was there for a year, uh, a few years ago, a guy named Cliff Noss, a uh, wonderful guy, N-A-A-S, and Cliff's work is about uh, technology and human engagement with it, and he came up with a study of multitasking that basically the conclusion was multitasking is a euphemism uh, for being really, really distracted. Um, and the stuff that I care most about, and I think probably all of us are going to endorse this at one level or another, so I don't, uh, I don't mean to be the sole standard bearer here, but we're in the life-changing business. We want to present students with amazing experiences that I would think will require 105 percent of their attention for long stretches of time. Uh, and I want to be in that environment, otherwise I'm not sure what I'm doing. If it's just data transfer that I'm doing, then I, I don't think I have a point, really, of being here. I, I, there's some other thing uh, that I feel like we need to be able to add to, uh, to the learning environment. So what is it in, a, uh, in technology that's going to allow that learning environment to be vibrant and exciting? Well, 
that causes, just that question I think is already interesting and disruptive. It causes you to try to reverse engineer what you're doing in your classroom to say, okay, well, what do I really care about in my classroom? That's already healthy. Uh, I, we, you know, even the, the most well-meaning colleagues among us, I think, will realize that we just don't spend enough time. Uh, and in moments of high professional stakes, we don't spend enough time asking that question. What do we care about in our classroom? What do we want to accomplish? How are we doing it? Are we doing it well? Can we do it better? Uh, this environment, the disruptiveness of it, to me, is the most healthy thing uh, that, that is, is coming out of it. Um, so working through that reverse engineering process, going from distributed learning model where we just had one camera and it was all downstream that was cheaper, uh, we moved over to a kind of web 2.0 model. Uh, and if you recall back in the early days of the, or the late days of the last century, um, people were talking about Web 2.0 as a revolutionary new way of understanding the web. This is where those out, out, the, those out in the, uh, as, as the uh, readers of data, the consumers of data, they were the ones that were going to produce what the web was all about as opposed to uh, large nodes that were distributing mostly downstream. Well, that was an interesting way to start thinking about things. Uh, caused us to, uh, we had new platforms on the uh, uh, online teaching that we were doing through LPS, uh, and those platforms had much more robust uh, upstream information. So you could hear from the students when they were concerned, when they didn't understand, they raised hands, you could ask questions and do polls and all these things. That really helped the idea of this as, a, as an interactive medium. I don't think, though, that we've achieved this full interactivity that we are that the medium uh, promises it can deliver, and I want to see whether that promise can actually be uh, borne out. Witnessing what Al does in his class is, uh, gives me hope. I think that there is true interactivity that's possible with real creative uh, use of, what, uh, of, what, of what's offered. Which brings me to the next sort of stage in the development of this technological um, uh, medium of social media. Uh, that, to me, uh, worked as a buzzword. Uh, I, I, it was about as uh, 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 meaningful to me as Web 2.0 was. It just, I didn't quite know what social media meant in terms of something revolutionary. Lots of people were telling me it was. Um, but I've seen in my own class uh, an a instantiation of this on our a very old-fashioned version of the Web, the discussion forum. The social media aspect of the discussion forum is extraordinary. The students in this massive crowdsourcing way are answering each other's questions in more efficiently and better than the teaching staff can. They can learn from each other in an environment in which they are fully adept, uh, whether I am or not, or my TAs are or not, I don't know. Uh, but the students really are good at answering each other's questions on a robust, well-structured discussion forum. The key thing is not just that anyone can write anything up there, it's that anyone can also vote for what's written up there. So they need to do two things when they're engaged in the discussion forum. Write their own views, answer questions of other people, and then also like or not like uh, things that are written up on the board. That makes the good stuff float to the top. And there's a constant stream from the 50,000 that are uh, engaged in the course of really good uh, uh, um, observations that are floating up to the top and getting scrutinized and getting grilled and lots of eyes around them. It's really extraordinary to me to watch that forum work. Um, I am in my own uh, engagement with this medium still in um, uh, the kind of, this is where I would depart a little bit from Al, still in the somewhat old-fashioned model, I think. Uh, I'm not out to destroy the lecture. Uh, I'm not out to watch it decay and disappear. I actually think that that's critical to what I do. What, the value added that I can bring, um, yeah, I think I'm pretty good at, at having a discussion and uh, helping facilitate that. But I think I'm probably, what I can bring to the table is I can, deliver a good lecture. And that ability, I think, uh, is something that uh, I'm testing in this new forum. Uh, it's a challenge, though. Uh, delivering a lecture is an interactive process that re re relies on a deep, connected engagement, person to person, with people in the room. Uh, the small nods you get, the, the frowns you get, the sleeping that you get, the drooling that you get, all those things are crucial. I mean, you have to have them. And when you're talking to an inanimate, uh, glass lens, uh, it is impossible to discern what's happening on the other side of that lens, which produces in me a different kind of performative template. And I'm not sure what the outcome of that performative template is going to be. Uh, we'll have to see. It, it, I'm not rooting for its demise. I think the lecture needs to find a way to, uh, to work on this format in order to advance into what's going to happen next. Uh, shorter segments are better. I've, that's been drilled into me. Um, at first, I was very resistant, but I think that's 
true, uh, and working on the shorter segment model has helped. Uh, and getting to the point, uh, I allow myself time to meander with my students that I realize I don't have when I'm talking to a much broader audience into a glass lens. So getting to the point and trimming things down is uh, critical. Assessments that are possible in this new environment, there are many of them. Uh, we can talk in detail about any particular piece of this, but there's peer assessed writing is wonderfully creative. Uh, it's, there, it raises all kinds of interesting problems, too. Uh, there are radio button quizzes, click and let the computer grade. There's, if you're creative with that, you can do good things with it. Um, I'm just scratching the surface, but I don't despair that that means mindless bubble filling in kinds of assessments. It could mean very creative and interesting kinds of assessments. Um, the uh, discussion forum is this critical new piece that I'm building into what the, how the course works. Um, and we'll see how these things go. I, uh, my model that I'm thinking about now uh, with the class is um, the live performance of what I do uh, in the classroom with Penn. I think of that an, an, an analogy to what happens in a play. Um, and what I do with the uh, web delivered course, I think of an, an analogy to what happens on TV. And I'm going to do the best I can in a TV-based environment. And I don't know that what I'm doing is producing something that's going to compete with what I can do in a live classroom. I think it probably won't. Uh, I think what it's going to do is compete with what I can do on History Channel, um, which is I think I can do a lot better controlling my environment here than you know, on this, uh, the 18-minute uh, segment uh, History Channel with the blood that comes on the screen and the crazy stuff with the... Um, uh, they're good for our enrollments, but still. Uh, so uh, the environment that we're working on, I think we'll have to find what strengths we can within, this, uh, within what's currently there. Uh, and uh, 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 it's still an experiment to me. I, I, I'm not sure. It's definitely, I think, uh, oversold at this point. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't pursue it despite its being oversold.